So following on from Results Day in 2022, I got quite a few messages from students letting me know just how well they'd done in A-level chemistry. And it was absolutely fantastic to read these messages. So much so that it gave me an idea for future videos. So I got in touch with the students and just said, is there any chance you could let me know what you did, what strategies you used to get your awesome grade and virtually all of them got back in touch with me uh, to let me know. So I decided to turn them into some videos. So this is the first one. Obviously, it's all about how to get an AA star in A-level chemistry. And these are revision tips, advice and resources from a real A star student. So the advice I'm going to go through with you now is from a student called Sophie. She got an A star in A-level chemistry. And the way she's done it is she's broken it down into what she did over the two years of the course, what she did every week, what she did closer to the exams, some online resources that she used, and then just a final summary. So starting with throughout the two years. So the first thing she mentions is she made sure her notes were filed in an organised way. Very, very obvious, but really, really important. She then would create summary notes on each topic. So once she'd finished a topic, she would summarise them. Once she'd done these summary notes, she'd highlight the important information. Where possible, she'd include diagrams, and she found that really helpful with recall. And basically, she wanted to try and develop a photographic memory for content that they, she just had to recall. The other thing she mentioned is she made flashcards, which she used to test herself. She also got members of the family to test her as well. And she found them really, really useful for recall things like definitions, colors of transition metal complexes, the reagents and conditions for organic reactions, qualitative analysis of ions, and testing for organic functional groups. So all that mind-numbing stuff, you just have to know. So we've got a couple of slides called each week. So the first one, she mentions she would spend a couple of hours reading over her summary notes. Remember, these are these condensed notes made from her actual notes. But she targeted topics she found difficult to remember. She says she used a large whiteboard, found that really helpful at home to try and recall as much as she could from her summary notes, and it also let her know what she couldn't remember. And obviously she would go back and work on that. The whiteboard was also really good for drawing out mechanisms, reaction pathways for organic reactions, and the organic synthesis apparatus. So your reflux, distillation, separating funnel um, apparatus. And the other thing she did was she created big A3 posters of the reaction pathways, stuck them on a bedroom wall and just looked at them a lot and said that really, really helped her remember them. So much so that when she was in the exams, she could actually see those things on her wall and she knew what was on each arrow. So moving on to the second each week slide. So another thing she mentions is she would spend a few hours each week doing practice questions. So obviously, you sort of learn all the stuff, but you need to know that you can do it. So practice questions are really, really good. And Physics and Maths Tutor is a great online resource because they've got banks of questions, real past paper questions, organized by topic. So you can just pick a topic and have a go at the questions and the answers are all there as well. She would typically do two or three topics a week. It all depends on the size of topics. So a topic like amount of substance or enthalpy are quite big topics. So you'd probably only manage to do that and one other topic. But if they're quite short, like atomic structure and isotopes or acids or something like that, you could probably do um, three that week. And that was a really good way to see where you were making your mistakes. And obviously making lots of mistakes is good because you can learn from the mistakes and hopefully not make them again. She also found it a good way to answer questions efficiently. So yeah, you might get all the marks, but it might be taking you too long to write your answer. 
And when you're in the exam, you've got really, you're, you're really under the cosh when it comes to time. So for example, second year exams, uh, papers one and two, you've got just over a minute per mark. So you've got to know your stuff, you've got to work fast. So even though you can do the questions, doing past exam questions is a good way, especially when you use the mark schemes, to see an efficient way to answer the question. So moving on to closer to the exams now. So once, you know, sort of around about the Easter time, let's say in your second year, so Sophie said she moved from practice questions to full papers. Again, Physics and Maths Tutor is a great way to find the papers. She completed them under the time constraints of the actual exam, because obviously you've got to get into um, working at full speed, exam speed. And it's also a good way to see how this papers are structured so that when you're in the real exam, you know exactly what's coming. Obviously, you don't know what the questions are going to be, but you know how it's all going to be structured and how long you need to spend on each section. And then once marked, any areas where marks were lost, she would go over those again to just make sure that she wasn't going to make those same mistakes again. So moving on to online resources now. So physics and maths tutor has already been mentioned. So that's a great place to get those topic questions and full papers. Sophie also mentioned that she used my videos and especially um, used them for topics that she found difficult to master. So she's quoted NMR in the information that she got back to me. And she found my way of answering the questions, the sort of format I have for those NMR questions quite handy. And it's lovely to read this. She actually grew to like them from it being a topic that she didn't like. She also mentioned that she found my past question walkthrough playlists helpful. So these were something that I decided to do last year. And on most of the messages I got back from students, they did mention that they found these particular playlists really, really helpful. So basically, if you don't know about them, I pick a topic and I get all of the exam questions that are on that topic and I basically go through each one a video at a time. So the, the exam question is available but just by clicking on the link in the description of the video. So you have a go at it and then I'll walk through it with you. And what she liked about them was the fact that mark schemes don't really explain what the question means. They just say this is the answer. Whereas she found somebody walking through the, um, the questions step by step was very, very helpful. And she's quoted a particular topic. So, you know, a lot of students that I teach really don't like this topic, the Arrhenius equation in the rates topic. But by the end of it, she wanted it to be on the exam. So it's a huge turnaround um, from Hayton to wanting it to be on the exam. So that, that was really lovely to read. So we'll just finish with a summary now. So top tips from, from Sophie, make sure you visit each topic multiple times throughout the year and mix up your strategy. So don't just do one thing all the time, mix it up. So some examples she's given, reading your notes, making those new condensed notes, those summary notes, making flashcards, use them to test yourself, get others to use them to test you, answering questions by topic or full papers, Watch videos, look at those reaction pathways posters, write them out from memory, either on paper or on a whiteboard. Write out mechanisms, again whiteboards are great for that, you can just write them out and rub it clean, try again. And then the other thing she found really, really helpful, do full papers under timed conditions. So when you put all that together, it's absolutely no wonder why Sophie achieved an A star in A-level chemistry. So I hope you found that helpful. I'll be doing another one shortly about a student who's gone from a low grade at around about Christmas of year two and turned it into at least an A.